Ibn Tran Holm, it's such a joy to have you here uh, at the Highland Report. You're kind of my sister. You're Danish. We're both Scandinavian. I'm Norwegian. You're a Christian. I'm a Christian too. We're proud Christians. We're proud believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, you are a feared, one of Denmark's most feared theologians and European leading intellectual speaking up precisely for the type of traditional and historical values that once made the West such a great civilization. But we've seen the past, uh, you know, years, how an illiberal, an intolerant, anti-Christian, anti-religion actually, elite has taken control of Europe and the West and demonized basically many of the Christian values and that what which we used to be. Uh, and you speak about Russia because you've been in Russia and you've spoken at length about the paradox that the Russians have embraced the Christianity we are throwing away. What kind of impact do you think this will have on our societies in the long run? It's hard to say, but I... I think after I visited Russia um, many times the last three years, one of the reasons why the West is demonizing Russia the way it does is because the, the, there is this anti-Christian spirit in the West. And because Russia has uh, abandoned communism uh, and the anti-religious culture, the anti-Christian culture, the West now hates Russia for that. And because instead it embraced Russian Orthodox faith. It's hard for the West to overcome that, I think. But I would say as much that going to Russia has been one of, so far, the finest uh, experiences in my life, the most overwhelming experiences, because for the first time, I was born in Scandinavia uh, in 69, uh, and at that time already, I mean, religion was not something we really talked about, and it was something outdated, uh, something that was mocked in school by our teachers, something that was completely belonged to the past. So I always had the feeling that it, I was wrong being a Christian. I was brought up as a Christian, but I always knew that this was not really part of the good circles in society. And I was, I wouldn't say I was embarrassed to talk about my Christian faith, but it was always something that needed a kind of courage to talk about. And for the first time when I came to Russia, I felt I was really part of the culture and it was accepted and it was really great and people thought it was just fantastic I was a Christian. They, they, I mean, they were treating me like a VIP just because I was a Christian and I couldn't believe that. It was really overwhelming. And I saw icons everywhere in the street. I saw people uh, prostrating themselves outside the churches. Uh, young people that just passed by a church, they would stop and make the sign of the cross. I was just completely astonished to see that because I was told by the mainstream media in the West that Russia was an evil aggressor and Putin was really a very evil ruler. And nothing, I saw nothing of that. I saw very um, humble people that was really interested in, the, in their Orthodox faith. Of course, not all Russians go to church yet because they were brought up with atheism, but they are coming back slowly to the church. But at least 10% of the Russians would practice. And I even spoke to young people that say, we're learning and we're interested and we think it's right. So even though people don't go to church every Sunday, they think it's right to do that. And they support uh, the Christian values and think that mo modern Russia should be built on uh, traditional Christian values. So if anybody had told me uh, when I was a child growing up in Scandinavia, uh, fearing the Russian invasion here, which we all feared, that one day I would uh, stand on the Red Square uh, and I would see icons above the entrance into Kremlin and I would feel more free as a Christian than I do in the West right now. I thought they would have been out of their minds. I thought they would have gone crazy or insane. Nobody would ever have imagined that kind of political change and spiritual change for that reason. So that's something that is extraordinary that it happened in our time. And, and it's very interesting as well because uh, even the media is picking up on that, mainstream media is picking up on that, discussing now the phenomenon that so many Christians in the West are looking to uh, Russia. For, for spiritual strength and uh, reading books, Russian books are being translated into English and, and these kinds of uh, things. And, and uh, we've published at the Heartland Report also a number of uh, 
the speeches that um, traditional theologians have held in the United States, arguing the Russia case, showing how precisely the need for, for anchoring a national identity uh, in religious values as well as cultural values. And if you make everything relativistic, that and we end up having a chaos, and then we end up having uh, you know civil wars. And when you look at the U.S. today and see the racial divide there, I mean, it's to me it's such a paradox uh, why the U.S. engages so actively in in wars on other continents, why they have their own inner cities and great problems with racial divide in their own towns. Why don't they clean up things in their own cities before they go to war with others for one and it's a sad thing because God created us diverse and different but there seems to be no acceptance for this difference in the West any longer and and I think that's one of the blessings or the good things with Russia I think they got very tired of communism and very tired of atheism uh, during the Soviet Union but the interesting uh, thing about Russian culture is that it actually is a very diverse culture I mean they have Muslims Muslims, they have Buddhists, they have Christians, but the framework, so to say, is Christian orthodoxy. And everybody knows that. So the, so the minorities, they are Russian citizens and they participate in Russian culture and they know exactly uh, that they are tolerated and they even liked. I mean, whenever I talk to Russian Orthodox clergy and I say, well, you are a Christian country, they say, yeah, but we have to, we have to uh, remember the Muslims. They're part of Russians too. Mm -hmm. So they had this welcoming attitude because they were, they were always part of Russia. So they can't think Russia without the Muslims and the Buddhists mm -hmm. in the Far East. And I think the reason why they don't try to implement Sharia law is because they know this is a Christian Orthodox society, even though that the Russian constitution of law says that there is no state religion. Yet everybody is Orthodox, Orthodox Christian, and it makes a huge difference because to be a Russian is to be an Orthodox in many ways. I mean, to understand Russia is uh, to understand that it's not just a nation, it's a spiritual concept. It's like a state of mind. They have this, this idea, the Holy Rus, Ruski Mia. It means that, that the essence of Russian culture is the Christian faith. And it's very strong, and now it's being revived after communism. And it's beautiful to see, and because nobody expected that. I mean, think about the Iron Curtain. When you saw television uh, during your childhood from Russia, we saw the Red Square with all the military parades. Who would have ever believed that this Christian or this nation should become a Christian superpower in the future? Nobody would have believed that. I would say it's a miracle in many ways. And it seems now um, that if you try to research a little bit that Christianity actually played a, a huge part or the church played a huge part in communism coming down. People's prayers, people's sacrifices and all the martyrs, all the martyrs, all the people who gave their lives for the faith. That's something that communism could not uh, defeat. They couldn't take away this, this stamina of faith. And it's very interesting. I live in the Middle East and I see precisely they're also Orthodox, of course, uh, Greek Orthodox, but it's really the same thing. And in, when you speak to Middle Eastern Christians, Syrian Christians, you know, uh, uh, Christians, I mean, Arab Christians or Christians, different groups from Israel, or you speak to people in Egypt and all, it's hard to be able to speak to um, priests without him saying, don't forget our Muslim brothers. So they do view themselves as the Christian group, but then let's not forget, we also help our Muslim brothers. So they have a oneness or, or, or a much, much softer approach, which makes uh, a complete different mosaic um, traditionally in the Middle East as well. Another thing which is also interesting is to see how many times uh, President Putin has visited Mount Athos in, in, in Greece, for example, and that was one of the first things he did once he came to power back then was to try to visit Mount Athos. I think some things went wrong, he had to go back, but as soon as he could he came back again. And, and, and it's quite remarkable.
remarkable to see the relationship. Uh, many might not know, but Mount Athos is, of course, the spiritual center and the mountain with so many monasteries, very old monasteries in Greece uh, that have delivered prophetic and, and really very strong uh, messages throughout the ages, actually, uh, and, and as a joint force and a spiritual force within the Greek Orthodoxy. I find that fascinating too, because that tells me that uh, Putin has something in his mind and, and is a driven person uh, and, and, and has a desire, uh, I would think, to do good. And this is why he seeks these uh, spiritual centers the way he does. Well, many people have asked me um, if I think that Putin is a personal Christian, because now I've been doing so much research and I travel so much in Russia. and. Uh, I think he is, and I asked a priest who's close to him uh, and his administration, and I said, is Putin a personal Christian? And then he said to me, or he answered, Mr. Putin is a very pragmatical man, he said, but whenever he goes to church, he always prays, and he prays uh, like a person who has faith does. And what I also noticed is that whenever you read his, his speeches where he talks about Christianity, uh, he uses words, he has a vocabulary that only a personal believer would have. It's not uh, the, the, the normal political language. You sense that he has a kind of, of deeper understanding of what is faith. And I also know people in a monastery in, in, a, in, a monastery in Moscow where he often comes. And uh, they also said that he is quite serious about his faith. And it's something he has developed over the years. Because when he started out as a president, I don't honestly think that he has much idea about faith. But being a president, he understood his responsibility. He understood how important orthodoxy is for the Russians. So I think he started to attend liturgies and he started to talk to priests and monks. And then over the years, he has come to understand his role and also that he could not make this without God. I mean, that was not possible for him. I mean, he is, he is the victim or the target of so much demonization and so many lies, and still he stands his ground and he doesn't care about what the West says. I mean, you need to have a very strong uh, foundation not to be completely blown off the track. So I think for him, it's very important to keep his faith alive. I would say pertaining to that, that it basically is none of uh, anybody's business what other people's personal religions are. Who is a man to question other people's beliefs uh, pertaining to what they very often do in the West? They say, oh, um, uh, President Putin is not a Christian, he's just pretending to be. What kind of sacrilegious uh, thing is that to say about somebody? So you're God now, uh, trying to assess who is a believer and who's not. Uh, I think all of those questions should be put aside and it's none of our business to, to God knows whether he is this or that. And apart from that, we can look at his speeches, we can look at his actions, we can look at also Obama's speeches, Obama's actions. We can also look at Angela Merkel's uh, actions and speeches and we can compare them with Donald Trump's speeches. And then we can see who is closest to voicing the need for uh, having the, the, the Christian values close in, in order to build a national identity. Um, and from then on, we can assess who we want to listen to and in that perspective this is how I view it uh, that when you read his speeches and when you read uh, much of the obviously politics is mixed into it also also with Archbishop Kirill obviously but they do speak about the the anti-christian movement in the West you even hear Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov speak about this in a number of of, of his speeches you know I mean they, they they really look into the way Europe is turning that Christian are being persecuted in Europe today and they're addressing it frankly and saying that this is a big mistake because you cannot have a strong national identity and not allow the people to have a strong religious and a moral foundation. This is what we need to face whatever dangers are coming from here or there, whether we are in Scandinavia or in Russia. So for this I really respect the, 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 the Russian attitude. Well, he has been very clear, President Putin. He said that the West had chosen Satan and Russia has chosen God. Of course, 
these remarks are never reported in the West, but he's been very clear in his spiritual um, assessment or his spiritual understanding of what's going on. Uh, so he's, but for me, it doesn't really matter if he's a personal Christian or not, because I think what he's doing is very important. And he gives a lot of money to rebuild churches. I think it was, it's, it's more than $100 million dollars he donated to uh, or gave to, from the government to build, rebuild churches. He opened monasteries and he has also made a law in school where now kids are being taught Christian uh, uh, or about Christianity. So he's doing a lot of good things and he's building a Christian culture which will survive long after he's gone. So I think that is what is important, that he's, he's in favor of the Christian values and he's trying to support the church and he's working with and for the church. And it was a problem to take over Russia, obviously, at the time after Yeltsin and uh, the whole country turning into one big mafia and the mob. And uh, there would have been such a chaos if they were not able in Russia to, to, to restructure the country and take control of all the assets uh, so that Russia should belong to Russia. Uh, so, so I think also that uh, the corruption problems in Russia and a number, a number of other issues that are not easily handled um, and the, some of the poverty and all these issues uh, is, is, is on the plate of the president and, and uh, he has to deal with and handle also the different olig oligarchs and the system there is structured in such a way I think that this will be a strong nation uh, in the years to come and nobody can deny the fact that President Putin has made Russia uh, into a very strong country and I would say that he is one of the leading uh, leaders in our time quite clearly. Well, it's clear that Russia has uh, certain problems uh, in their political system uh, but I think Russia never had democracy like we had in the West because before the revolution they had the Tsar and uh, I mean people don't, didn't even have their own right to their own lives, they were owned by somebody else until the revolution. And uh, then comes the revolution and it's a completely state control system. So it's the first time that the Russians are free to do whatever they want. And they want a strong leader like Putin. I mean, it's, it's, it's in the Russian soul that they want this kind of, of leader. And for them, this is democracy. Uh, and uh, what is the difference between Russia and, and the West is that in Russia, you, pr you protect the majority here we protect only the, major, the minorities. So this is a huge uh, difference between us. And the majority is Christian Orthodox. But I think his most important accomplishment, in my opinion, is that he is, he is ready to rebuild Christian Russia. Uh, he's not against that. Because we could have had in Russia a secular-minded leader who would say, I don't care about the church. I want a completely secular, atheistic state. And I don't want to have anything to do with that. The church, of course, would have survived and would have been, you know, of course it would have been flourishing anyway. But I think it is within the, the Russian tradition that there is this uh, old tradition with a symphonia between state and church. And you actually see that Putin is listening to the church when he is, uh, when he is um, making new laws. Uh, so... I think it is a positive development, and we used to have that in the West as well. Now we lost it. Uh, and like I said uh, before, I think that in the West now we have adopted cultural Marxism and we will see the second coming of Marxism. So we will turn into another Soviet Union and we will see people want to go to Russia to be in the free world, at least Christians. I think we will see a lot of Christian dissidents now because it's simply impossible to have a job and to express your opinion and to practice your faith in a few years. You would, you would really, we already have the psychological persecution as you were talking about. And maybe we will even have the physical persecution later on. So I think it is a serious situation. And that's why I would like to inform at least Christians in the West that they can go to Russia and they can feel free as Christians. And those people are not our enemies, they're our allies when it comes to rebuilding a Christian culture. It's a strange thing too, because when you walk the streets of Moscow, you could close your eyes and you're in Oslo. All the girls are blonde and all, I mean, it's just, we're, we come from the same heritage. 
Even the early kingdoms of Rus in Kiev were created by Swedish and Scandinavian Vikings. When we went Viking in the olden times, we always went westward to England and Ireland and, and Scotland. We never went to the east because that's where we had our brothers in Kiev and Hard, Hard, Hardrada and many of the Scandinavian kings. Uh, once something went wrong, Saint Olaf of Norway as well, when, once something went wrong, they went straight to Kiev. God knows that the US needs to create an outer enemy with 20 trillion dollars in debt and a, co a country that's almost collapsing uh, and no democracy anymore and an ultra-rich elite uh, steering and controlling almost everything. Uh, and the people of America are saying so over 70% they don't want more wars, yet the US elite is going to war everywhere. And I mean, it's unbelievable when you listen to senators like John McCain, for example, and, and, and the dollar almost collapsing now. So, I mean, it's very understandable they need to create an enemy and why not white and Christian, uh, to put it that way, Russia. So there are many reasons, driving forces behind why but also normally, Russia. I mean, we should see Russia as an ally because we're Christians. Yes. We're two Christian cultures and as you say, back in time we were, we, we were much closer uh, in our roots, in our origins. And that's why it doesn't make sense that we should see a Christian culture as our enemy. Unless we have become an anti-Christian culture that doesn't want to have a Christian nation as our ally. Because it seems to me very awkward that our society, I mean, the, this, this radical leftist, this cultural Marxism, are in bed with Islam, are in, in, in bed with all the jihadists, and they're actually trying to defend them and that they're protecting them. And the only reason I can find is that they hate Christian culture so much that they have a kind of perverse joy to see the Muslims or the jihadists destroying Christian culture. And that's why they can never team up or being allies with Russia, because they're anti-Christian. But I would actually argue that um, Muslims, regular Muslims, do not see in Europe, for example, they actually do not see, this is my experience, they do not see Christians as an enemy. I would argue that the, the ones that actually see Christianity as an enemy are the, let's say, the atheists and the extreme secularists uh, in Europe. And in many places in the world, for example, in the Middle East, you see, I'm not talking about Islamists, I'm talking about regular Muslims. Uh, and in many places in the Middle East, you see precisely, you know, the, the kind of uh, a joint venture with Christians will speak about good about Muslims. And so I think many times the extreme secularists in Europe have misused and used the Muslims that have come in and tried to instigate a war and to yeah. use them too to make a war against the Christian element. They make them do the dirty element. job, that's true. They make them because, do the dirty job. Because the Islamists, they want to break the cross and they have persecuted Christians, they have slaughtered Christians everywhere. So we cannot say that they like Christians because they don't. I am talking about traditional Muslims. I'm not talking about yeah, Islamists know. because Islamists, of course, has an intolerance towards regular Muslims as well mm -hmm. and have killed millions, you know, I mean, hundreds of thousands over the years, millions in the Middle East. Or Muslims have been killed by other Muslims. So that's true. What I'm talking about is regular, standard, let's say, traditional Muslims, I think, have been used in Europe. Absolutely. I think they have invited them in to completely finish the Christian culture. Mm -hmm. And that's why we should see Russia as an ally to defeat Islamic uh, radicals. But we don't. Mm -hmm. Instead, we have actually seen America helping those people in the Middle East uh, with weapons. Uh, so I think the West is completely morally corrupt. Russia used to be that during the Soviet era. Now it's coming back to its senses. It's coming back to its Christian moral compass. And that's why I think that Russia is going to be, uh, you said, what kind of impact will Russia have uh, on us in the future? I think Russia will be a light in this world. And I think that, at least for many Christians, it will be a nation that they will be very uh, grateful for. And probably uh, Ru Russia will be some kind of spiritual leader for other countries. I think so.
Thank you very much, Ibn Tranholm, Danish theologian and a feared, uh, feared journalist uh, in an intellectual in Europe. Thank you for coming to the Highland Report and speaking to us about Russia. Thank you for having me.